We're here today with Casey and talking about the new hub we're putting on the number nine.com research page uh, to help people um, find community services for head injuries. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about you? Not bad. Not bad. Looking forward to getting outside. Yeah. <laughs> Community services are available to most people, particularly with head injuries, but most people with disabilities uh, here in Kansas, uh, we have Minds Matter and uh, Disability Rights and also um, Oak Rehab. Oak Rehab. Uh, Kansas is the first state in the US to acknowledge TBI as a disability and uh, severe injury, um, bring together a hub of some of these different um, advocates, um, forehead and head injuries. And there's my head injury. <laughs> right, since you mentioned the research uh, with the University of Kansas, do you wanna give just a brief overview of what that research is currently? I, um, well, Casey and I started working together uh, after I had a head injury and we, uh, found out early that there was not really a protocol for head injuries or um, identifying even basic concussions. Just basically keeping a, a journal and recordings of observations of the fu your functioning, um, behaviors, nutrition, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you were what you were in pursuit of. You were, you were going to University of St. Mary's, right? Yeah, I was getting my master's at the time uh, when that all started. And I think it was in that period when we first kind of came up with that idea. And I, I don't think that there's not anything out there to identify TBIs or head injuries. It's kind of the comprehensive um, continuum of care once you do identify that there is a head injury. So and they're hard to identify. A lot of people have head injuries and don't realize a how serious they are, but also how it changes your perception. Right. So there's I mean there's several assessments and testing batteries out there. They just kind of mix and match kind of specific areas that they're targeting in identification. The military has its own, uh, medical has its own. So I th think the idea we had is compiling all that from a start to where, does, where do we take this person in the future, depending on what their needs are. And that's all part of it. First, how do we identify that they do have a brain injury or a head injury? Um, how do we best see what on an individual basis, what they need for treatment. And a big part of it, and I'll toss it back over to you for this, is there's primary treatments for head injuries, but there's also alternatives and we didn't wanna leave anything out. So a big piece of it is the alternative pieces. Right, that are really in individual, depend on how, how the person's head injury is presenting. My, my interest was originally a frequency study um, on framing and priming of children and youth. So I came into a head injury being aware of how, um, how vulnerable young minds are to any frequency that they come in contact with, whether it be um, moods of 
teachers in school to before they get on the bus, um, young minds are very uh, open and sensitive to uh, being steered into being prepared to learn for the day. And then after my own head injury, I realized I had been knocked back to that point um, of being very vulnerable and susceptible to what many adults just take for granted, um, that you're understanding everything someone's yammering at you when all it really is is a bunch of words and you're trying to appear as normal as possible and and like you're understanding but in reality you know once they've walked away you don't even remember what they were talking about sometimes not even remember seeing the person depending on how the head injury is presented i know personally um, short-term memory was highly affected long-term retrograde and and anterior grade but mostly interior grade, I could see someone and within, I think when, when we first met within a week, I would have a span. So I would meet someone and by the end of the week, I would have forgotten who, that I've ever met that person, which in rehabilitation, that becomes an interesting exchange. <laughs> right. And so that, that would be at least one measure of plasticity is, that duration have you noticed any difference from a week has that lengthened out where you can remember people longer if you haven't seen or had any memory triggers of them right well that's i mean that's when we started with the study i mean i'm completely different i'm almost a different person than when i met you as far as i had about a week span that I could hold on to a memory and then it would be gone. So if I was in rehabilitation and I learned a lesson, by the end of the week, I didn't remember the lesson, which ended up frustrating a lot of people, uh, particularly my folks, um, because it's hard for people to grasp that you just don't, you know, you've been moved to another time. And it's almost like dealing with children. Um, so for a person with a head injury, it's really important to journal like we did. And that becomes helpful because then you can retrace those steps. So if you know why I don't remember things well, by trying to become more mindful of, of that fact, by rereading it in a journal, or in my case, it was going through an archive of past experience, you begin to... Um, a re uh, it's kind of like moving files from a file cabinet that's old and rusted to a new file cabinet that's more organized that old rusted file cabinet is the damaged brain and you need to get a hold of that file in your memory and revisit it so it'll reattach itself to um, to a new area of the brain Yeah, I do remember when I first met you, you carried around an iPad. Right. I think I I jokingly referred to it as, what did I call it? Your adult teddy bear or security right. device. Because um, it and had, that was besides just having reminders and schedules and stuff like that, <clears throat> your archive of pictures was almost like your memory triggers. Right. Um, there's an old, I'm not going to remember the movie, but there was a, a special needs kid in there and he had this thing he carried around like uh, key cards that had pictures of trusted individuals. So the picture of his parents, his bus driver, his teacher, um, so he could remember and know and feel safe with them, that kind of thing. And that, that's what the iPad made me think of. It was just a security device for a lot of reasons. Um, but I think you only use that for a little while, and then you didn't really need that same level of memory triggers, I don't think. Right. And I think I was, I happened to come out of a 
a very toxic environment that wasn't necessarily healthy for a head injury. I think a person with a head injury should assess what is really helpful right now. You know, is if if you feel off, it might be the, a way for your um, higher consciousness to let you know maybe the situation's not right, and that's part of the reason we're doing adding this hub onto the website is so people can maybe start addressing these issues. Um, you know, am I comfortable in the situation I'm in? Do I have enough advocacy? Are there people who care about what my experience gen genuinely is? I, th I think those are some basic questions. One that has a concussion or, or an identified head injury should should begin. It's a good place to begin. I think that's where I was when I met you. I was, I knew something was was wrong and didn't feel right, but I also wanted to hold on to those memories. So that iPad had kids pictures and driver's license and things that you need day to day codes for um, rehabilitation address of where I was living and my folks, all, all that in a place that I knew was going to be there, like a big wallet almost. Right. Digital wallet. Right. So, yeah, it's definitely difficult to kind of navigate both internal and external factors. Um, certainly immediately after a head injury, uh, a person isn't really able to control a whole lot of the internal factors. And without those internal factors in place, you're not really in a good position to manage the external things, um, the people around you, your situation, your environment. Uh, and that's another piece of it too, is giving a person the skills, uh, putting their body in the best position the best capacity it has to heal itself to be able to manage make decisions make choices and navigate those external factors as well i think the three the three main things a person who suspects they have a concussion if they've noticed there's some atrophy or um you're forgetting things or you can't locate things in your in your mind um, maybe assess, am I, do I feel safe? Am I, do I feel like people are understanding me and do I have the right advocacy from a community service? 